Uh, I'm Charlie Kaufman. I'm Perkin Elmer's uh, product specialist for ingredient performance products uh, for the food division. What we'll talk about today, we'll just do a, a really quick RVA overview since the intended audience here is existing uh, RVA users, maybe some people who are RVA aspirational. Um, and we'll talk about why performance analysis uh, is important. We'll talk about waste reduction and then most of what we talk about is going to be uh, dry mix performance analysis and um, replacing test bags. So, uh, as we all know, the RVA measures ingredient performance. It's a unique tool uh, in that regard. Nothing else really does what it does uh, in this way. Uh, it's the industry standard tool for starch quality, um, soft wheat flour performance, uh, and it, uh, it allows the user to kind of quantify and visualize effects of on performance from things like uh, heat damage, uh, other starch damages, milling conditions, particle size, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, there is a big library of stock methods. Um, there is a bunch of AACCI official methods. It's now called cereals and grains, but same difference. Uh, and it's infinitely customizable. And this is uh, especially handy where dry mixing is concerned because uh, Dry mixes vary quite a bit, and uh, what might be a really descriptive method for you know, brand A's pancake mix is uh, potentially not going to be descriptive for uh, brand B's uh, cake mix. So, what it allows you to do uh, really is uh, really nail down an idea of what optimal performance looks like: pasting, hydration, gelation behavior, things like that. Uh, so, if they're if there's anything weird about that ingredient or that uh, or that ingredient system, uh, the RVA will almost certainly find it. Uh, we have yet to encounter a nut that we couldn't crack here. So um, this also means that the RVA detects deviations from from normal or optimal in uh, dry mixing, which um, uh, identifies things like omissions and double doses and things like that, and it reduces the need for uh, for test baking uh, in our experience. And test baking is so expensive and the descriptive power is so poor that um, if, uh, if you can get a more scientifically responsible alternative to uh, test baking, then you've got to take that. So um, why measure performance at all? Um, at uh, Perkin Elmer in the food division, we obviously have a lot of um, uh, we have a lot of uh, compositional performance analyzers, uh, near infrared, uh, FTNIR, stuff like that. But um, performance analysis is uh, especially important. It's sort of the other side of that coin, right? So it doesn't always detect things like. Uh, compositional analysis doesn't always detect things like starch damage or errors in dry mixing, enzyme treatments, pasting behavior, uh, stuff like that. So we generally follow the same sort of protocol uh, every time. We follow the same plan uh, every time we implement an RBA for quality control. The lowest hanging fruit, of course, is the incoming ingredients. If you can make sure that the incoming ingredients are uh, are normal that each one is optimal um then uh then that's half the battle a lot of the downstream waste uh, tends to evaporate uh the finished products themselves uh whether that finished product is um uh, an extruded snack or it's uh finished product the dry mix itself and um uh those tend to be uh shelf stable and um uh, they can be uh, evaluated before the before the product re gets released, often as a positive release. Um, Premixes, I, I guess, are the uh, are the next um, are the next easiest thing. So, if there's like a cream cake base mix uh, in the context of a mixing plant, um, then that would be something that uh, that we could QC independently before additional flavors get added to it. Uh, and then process intermediates. Is probably the last thing we address uh, within a given uh, production facility. Uh, those tend to be uh, extremely transient, and sometimes they're not available at all uh, to us. Um, but if uh, if we can get at them and we have time to uh, to test performance and, and process intermediates, then we will. 
no stone unturned. So uh, today specifically, we're going to talk about dry mixing and test baking. Um, dry mixing is where uh, sort of where dreams go to die, isn't it? Uh, so a lot of waste uh, and a lot of loss from just things that are inherent to dry mixing. So uh, the incoming ingredients obviously can be nor it can be abnormal. Um, shipments get crossed up or you know sometimes you just get weird flour and then um at, at least you've got the the comfort of knowing that that stuff isn't really your fault um but with dry mixing there's a big group of stuff that is actually your fault uh so uh especially where hand ads are concerned uh things get added twice or left out or sometimes a vacuum conveyor will get clogged and uh ingredient will get added uh, incompletely and until now the way to uh, address variability in dry mix composition was to just was to just bake it and um, we started hearing uh, quite a bit from the bakers themselves that they that they thought that the analyses that they were being asked to perform were not especially descriptive and for that reason, they were kind of sick of taking heat uh, for for bad product, and together with you know the R and D groups at these um, these companies, they uh, thought, well, maybe we can use the RBA to evaluate cooking performance of these mixes, and it'd be a little more statistically responsible, uh, we'd get better descriptive uh, power uh, out of that analysis than we than we do in uh, in test bake. So um, really expensive to pay people uh, to stand there and bake cakes all day. Uh, it takes the cakes a while to cool down completely. Um, and then the, uh, the battery of analyses uh, is pretty subject to operator input, uh, that sort of thing. And um, so there are, there are some things uh, about it that are bad. Um, so given Given all this time and expense, um, is there is there a better way to do that? Could we just do it in the slurry with the RPA? And um, it turns out we can't get into that. So we had to call in a professional uh, a little bit here to fully bear this out, but uh, we needed a um, test baking facility, which we of course have, in our office didn't have. Um, so we worked with uh, with NCI at NDSU at Fargo, and uh, we designed an experiment wherein uh, these cake mixes would be deliberately manipulated to simulate uh, real life conditions, and um, uh, where they had altered levels of uh, primary ingredients like flour, sugar, uh, things like egg, uh, things like that, and then functional ingredients, and these weren't omissions or double doses uh, per se. They were just under doses, under doses. So uh, then we could compare those to the normal controls, both with the RPA and with test baking. So with this experiment, we answered a few uh, a few of the questions we had, right? So how how good is the RBA? And then how good is test baking? And statistically, um, are, are the bakers right that test baking is not a very good detector uh, of, of problems in mixing? So, um, oh, I got a few years ago now, it seems like yesterday, uh, 2016 Cereal Foods World. And as we're going to see, for almost all of the alterations that they made, uh, the RBA could tell the difference. It could, it could spot the weird one, uh, the difference between the modified sample and the control. So, and in these cakes that they made, uh, the test baking analyses could only detect altered levels of egg powder and soda, um, which is not a lot. So it, that means it's not it's not detecting things like flour or sugar uh, stuff like that. So uh, the RVA is statistically more sensitive. Uh, than test baking and uh, the bakers very likely were right that it, that it wasn't um, it wasn't as descriptive as 
community, I think, had, had collectively assumed. Now, the big caveat here is that, yes, the RVA is more descriptive than test baking, um, but we didn't really feel like we had room to say how different does the mix need to be from control before it's actually bad? Uh, so that's uh, that's a little more subjective. So whether the whether the test baking analysis uh, protocol that they were using could detect what someone would consider bad uh, dry mixes is um, I, that, I guess maybe that's a question for sensory groups. But whatever the um, whatever the test baking can detect, uh, the RBA certainly uh, do as good, if not better, uh, a job. So here's kind of what it looks like. So in this case, we manipulated the sugar levels uh, of this cream cake base mix. And you can see um, the control group in the middle, the red and blue. Uh, for dry mixes with uh, good homogeneity, uh, the RVA is uh, as, as reproducible uh, as you would expect. Uh, so repeatability is excellent, reproducibility also excellent. And um, you can see that altered levels of sugar uh, here result in uh, a reduction or an increase in, uh, in viscosity, especially during the, uh, the gelation phase of this, uh, of this test for the sample is cooling down. So um, the, uh, the samples with the added sugar uh, showed a uh, lower viscosity and samples with reduced sugar showed the higher viscosity. And that makes sense, right? Um, because of how we know that, that sugar competes uh, with, um, with starch for, um, for water binding and, it, and alters the osmolarity of that uh, suspension medium. So our big dream here is to use the new capability of the RVA software to consult a chemometric model and then identify what actually happened. So instead of, instead of tribal knowledge, uh, the chemometrics would tell you that, okay, well, this had an underdose of soda or this had an underdose of sugar. Um, things like that. We're not there yet, but uh, we'll we'll keep plugging away, and by golly, we'll get there one day. So, uh, but long story short, if there is a functional variation in the mix, the RVA will will probably find it almost certainly. Um, it doesn't find things like uh, vanilla, right, that are functionally inert, which is a shame because those things are often expensive. But the RVA measures performance, and um, some of these uh, ingredients don't really have a big impact on, on performance. So this is a forest of numbers, but these are the RVA results. And what you need to know about this is that the red ones showed uh, statistically significant deviation from control. So. Things like uh, soda, salt, egg, flour, sugar, uh, things like that um, will really stick out like a sore thumb. And things that are uh, less functionally active, like dry milk and vanilla, uh, things like that, are going to be um, are going to be harder to sniff out. Uh, not to say that's impossible. This was just these tests were performed with the stock method for uh, for cake mixes. By that group at, uh, at NCI. So let's take a look at uh, test baking and see how it stacks up. You can see there's a lot left red there. So it looks like you're reliably detecting egg and reduced levels of soda, but not necessarily elevated levels of soda. Um, and overall, overall less descriptive um, and of course it it takes longer to evaluate uh, each cake uh, as opposed to automated uh, RBA analysis. So the test baking is failing to dis to detect some of these some of these big variations um, and the RBA does find. So 
the RVA per test is faster, and of course, it requires way less operator input than, than baking a little cake. Um, so, Eureka, right? We can maybe replace test baking with uh, RVA analysis. And that's, that's certainly true. However, the RVA, in our experience, can sometimes create a bottleneck uh, in the situation because it, it can only run Whereas if you're test baking, you can do multiple batches at once. Um, so what we have to do is keep our eyes on the prize and uh, focus on the problem products first. Um, so if we can implement uh, implement one RVA for you know, two product lines and keep everything else uh, the same, the cost savings and downstream waste reduction um, resultant from that implementation are going to be enough to pay for an additional RVA, and then you pick the next two, next worst uh, product lines, and so on and so forth. So um, cost-wise, even not not eliminating test bakes, but even reducing the frequency of test bakes uh, is a big deal. It means you can release a product a lot sooner. Um, and like I said, it's going to be a much better descriptive power with the RV.